doing a rig rundown with uh, Rigs of Death Metal. We got Lance from 200 Stab Wounds here. We're going to talk some guitars and talk about riffs. What's up, Lance? Hanging out. Feeling good. Word. So uh, why don't you uh, talk us through what you got here? Well, right here I got the, uh, the Ultra Plus 120. It's uh, one of the later high-gain PV models from the early 2000s. Uh, I got a Mesa set of tubes in there, and I'm liking it. Uh, I prefer the VTM series. It's like closer to a Marshall sound, which I like. But uh, I picked this up like on the cheap, and I've been running it with this, uh, this carbon cab. I'm not sure the exact model, but it has uh, like a V30 copy in there. And uh, with the larger rooms we're playing, I like the sound. But for uh, like smaller like DIY type spots, there isn't enough low end for me. But we've been playing a lot of larger rooms lately, so I've been rocking with it. It's cool. Yeah. And then nothing, nothing fancy on the pedal board. I got the decimator, a tuner, and then the Wampler Plexi Drive Deluxe. So this this has uh, active pickups in it. The EMG 81, I believe which are not as hot as whatever is in the LTD 1000. So like, I'll switch off between guitars certain days. So I'll run the Charvel with the boost on the, the Plexi Drive, and then I'll run the, the LTD just straight into the head. And then in the loop, I just have a, a 10 band EQ and a, a Boss NS2 just to make sure there's no noise at all. And I can dial out frequencies I don't like, all that. And uh, I do run, this has built-in reverb, I run like the smallest bit of reverb just to like round out the sound a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Did you say you were getting most Did you say you were getting most of your gain from the PV and then just boosting it with the Wampler? Or are you kind of using this as your primary gain? Yeah, yeah. So I can run, I can run the, the LTD uh, just straight in, all amp gain, cranked all the way up. But with the Charvel, it's like a little bit... A little bit less than that so I like to kick the drive on I have it about I don't know seven o'clock on the Wampler and then I've been experimenting there's a there's two gain channels on this there's like the ultra setting and then the uh, the crunch setting so I've been trying to like get a nice middle ground like between running the the Wampler fully cranked on the crunch channel and the ultra with just like a little bit of boost and uh, I've just been liking the ultra channel with a little bit of boost more so. Sounds sick. Can't wait to hear it here in a little bit. What would you say uh, would be the biggest inspiration for a lot of 200 stab wounds kind of music? It's like you guys uh, always get brought up in the conversation of the death metal revival. So who do you uh, who do you guys kind of draw from? Yeah. Well, uh, Steve did the majority of the song writing for our two, two releases right now. So you'd have to ask him about that. He he wrote a majority of the uh, the instrumental, but uh, for me, like when I write stuff at home, when I demo stuff at home, it's all like weird, off timey like slam riffs. Like like I, I like a lot of slam, like short bus pile up, megalodon, uh, epicardiectomy, cemetery rapist. Like I listen to a bunch of like weird slam, and like that's where I try to like derive most of my style from, just because it's like weird. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear the same Morbid Angel rib, like, for another 20 years, you know what I mean? So I try to, I try to like, go to, like, the more extreme side. That seems to be where I fall from. And then, also, uh, Hatebreed is the best band on the planet. I love death metal, but, like, Hatebreed is just... Oh, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of, a lot of, like, the other stuff that I write that's not, like, when I'm not trying to be super technical, it all comes from Hatebreed. So. Most fights I've ever seen break out at a show... We're at a hate breed show. They had bikers working as security. It was like Woodstock craziness. Just like seeing people get thrown on pool tables and everything. Well, uh, you guys have got to play with some pretty pretty big names. Uh, tonight we're uh, obituaries headlining. We also got Gruesome here. Give me uh, maybe a dream tour that you guys would like to be a part of. Uh, dream tour. Cannibal Corpse, Hatebreed, probably Entombed. Um, yeah, shit, that'd probably be good for me. I mean, I'm really into this band called uh, Screw. They're an industrial band, like 
early 90s. Danny Lohner was in uh, Nine Inch Nails for a minute. They're like more on like the metal side of industrial. That's like one of my favorite bands ever. So if it was Cannibal, Apebreed, Screw, and and if we're throwing in modern bands, homies from uh, Sanguisuga Bog and Undeath, like that would be immaculate. That'd be phenomenal. And uh, last thing, and we'll kind of let you go here. Is there uh, any new toys that you're kind of eyeballing? Uh, yeah, so we actually recorded my tracks on the LP with a modded JCM 800, which is closer to the VTM sound that I like. So I would like to find one of those and uh, get it modified to the, like similar specs of the one that I used on the record. And uh, I also just played with uh, an Ampeg VH 140, the solid state. That thing was phenomenal. I played it through um, an Emperor 612. Yeah. Dude, that thing was... That, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. Like, I've never played through one of those through that cab, and it sounded killer. So, yeah. I, I think uh, when we saw Sanka Bog, I think Sed might have been playing one of the, yeah. some of the... Actually, I think he was playing two stacks of them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has, he has one of those. And, like, they didn't have their bass player that night, but you couldn't even tell. They yeah. just shook the whole place. That's awesome. So, anybody watching this, if you got a hookup on one, hit Lance up. Let me know. Not for two grand, though. Not for two grand. I'll yeah. pay a fair price. Right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you for your time. We'll let you get ready. So here with uh, 200 Stab Wounds again. We're going to do a little uh, little gear talk here. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you walk us through the setup here, bud? So, guitars, I have... This is my main one. It's a... Uh, I think, I don't know, because BC Rich fucking serial numbers are real, uh, they're real messy. Oh, yeah. I think it's an 87, but yeah, fucking bolt-on neck, Floyd Rose I had installed, Harpoon headstock, yeah. yeah, dude, it's like, I think these are stock pickups too from whenever it was made, I think 87, yeah. like I said, they have no name on them, mm-hmm. I, th- I think they're stock, so, this is my main one, and the backup is I want to say I think it's a 2016 Legacy so it's a Mockingbird through neck and Floyd on it all the little controls I really don't know what it does I don't really use it I don't give a fuck about it um yeah dude this is the backup whenever this one fails it's this one and for the pedals I have a delay just for like solos and dive bombs and stuff like that or whatever. And then this one is a, it's like a multi effects pedal. Yeah. So you can really use it for any, there's like reverb, uh, delay, whatever on there. But as you can see, this knob is missing. So I don't really fuck with anything else for, uh, other than um, pitch shifting. So right now I have it set to like a pitch shifter. So when I hit like a crazy dive bomb, I hit that pedal on and it sounds like a, like a, like a mouse. It just fucking super high shifted dive bomb. This is a No uh no disturb covers with that one? No, 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 no. <laughs> we we could, but no, we don't. Um this one is a it's a it's a decimator too. It's like it's kind of like a noise suppressor, but you run it instead of running it through the effects loop, you run it straight to the front of the amp and it kills all feedback. So for like all the clean stops we have and stuff, it works really well for that. Uh, this is an Ivan S2 Screamer. I'm not sure of like what the era it is or what year it is, but it's a, it's like a distortion boost pedal. So I just leave it on the whole set. Sure. Makes it more crunchy. And then just a tuner. Oh, yeah. 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 And then I see the uh, trusty six, uh, 6505 here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a regular 6505. I'm not, dude, I'm not, I'm not a tech guy. I don't know anything about equipment or anything like that but I got this for Christmas like five years ago and I've been using it ever since it's just a regular 6505 it sounds really great um the only complaint I have with this header though is is it's really fucking noisy it's really noisy it sounds great it has really good crunch and you can like all these knobs right here it's very touchy like you know how when you drive a new car and you hit the gas pedal, and it's like, or yeah. as opposed to your car, where it's like you have to fucking punch it to make it go anywhere. Sure. This one is super punchy, and like, 
I can literally move this one right here up a notch right there and it makes a whole difference. So I love it for that because it's super specific as to what you want, but it just makes a lot of room noise. And if there's a grounding issue in the venue that you're playing, oh yeah, like it, it could shock you or some shit on the mic or like it would make a lot of noise. So I do, I do have another pedal that I don't have out here, but if you go in the back of the amp, I run a noise suppressor, like a regular Boss NS1 or NS2 or something. Yeah. And it kills all the amp noise. But, yeah. And then the cab, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I, I'm pretty sure it's a PV VTM from the 80s. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Hell yeah. I don't know exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, it sound, all everything sounds really good together. Every, like, the cab... I never noticed how much a cab can make a difference until I started, like, sometimes we'll play shows where we all have our own rig, but then we'll pull up, and they'll be like, the headliner will be like, oh, you can just use our back line. So we'll plug into their back line, and my head will sound completely different than what it would through my cab, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. So I really like this cab. It, it's really warm, really low end, so you can kind of feel it in your chest, you know what I mean? And... um it's really defined, yeah. you know what I mean? So, sounds good, I yeah. think. Yeah, dude. The, uh, I was always kind of brushed off cabinets as well, and then I started messing like with uh, cab IRs and stuff, you know, kind of running tube heads into like a loader and all that, and just yeah. trying different speaker combinations. And, right. and then like you said, borrowing back lines and stuff like that. Yeah. It sounds like we got sound check going on behind us, so we'll have to try to work around that. Yeah. But, uh, you never know the difference until you fucking try something else, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I've always been happy with this, and then, like, sometimes I'll try other stuff that's that's either better or worse. Like, I'll use, I'll, it's funny, I'm actually going to admit this. I have a fucking Line 6 cab at home that I preferred over this for, like, years. Like, nice. it was, it was, it, it sounds so. Unless you can design speakers, yeah. they're not bad. Yeah, they're not bad. They're not. They sound good. It's like. It's, like, super high-end, but they still have a little bit of, like, punch to it. Yeah. And fucking... But it doesn't cut into, like, the bass. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Re it's really weird, but I actually like this. It's actually a decent cab. It's fucking... It works nice. We've actually been looking for another one so I can full stack it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. Another so. three. <laughs> another three. Or, or, yeah, another yeah. three, so he can full stack it. <laughs> also had to kind of point out, we've got a, uh, a Zeno... Uh, built pedal board here. Our boy Tony yeah. from Zeno Guitars and Inoculation. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how I found that actually. We so right before 200 Stab Wounds started, we we played another band called um, Subtype Zero. Yeah. And we did a show. I can't remember what the show was or what the lineup was, but we we had a show and it was booked and it was I think it was like a house show at some random dude's house. Actually, it was. Okay, funny. I remember now. So it was Subtype Zero and Sanguisugabog. And we were supposed to play at this bar called uh, the 5 O'Clock Lounge. And then that's right when the COVID hit. But no one knew how serious it was. So we had the show booked, and then the day of, it got canceled. So we were like, okay, let's move the show somewhere else. And no one else was really on it. So we had just booked the show ourselves. Moved it to some dude's house that we knew. Or I think it might have been like a friend of a friend or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, our drummer plays in another band called Assault, and I think he had a buddy that had moved the show to his house or something. But funny thing is, when we got there, um, we had like started to set up and, you know, the opening bands or whatever, whatever. And people started showing up. A lot of people started showing up. And then he didn't realize it was like a real show. He thought it was like a like a jam. Like a practice type session or whatever. I don't I don't know. There was a touring band in Philly that was going I forget the name of it. There was a touring band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if the show started happening or whatever. And and the guy that owned the house freaked out. And he's like, get the fuck out of here. Like he started kicking everybody out. So we're like, okay, cool. We moved the show to this venue that our friend owned. Or it's not a venue really. It's like a record store slash like, just like a metal store. Yeah. But she had like a space connected to it where you could throw a show at the time. It's called the Black Market. And we ended up moving the show to there after he kicked us out. And a bunch of people went there. And I, I forgot what my point of the story was, but yeah. So, yeah. 
Oh yeah, the pedal board. Yeah. So I got. I, we were in the black market. We went upstairs and I found this. It was just sitting there under like all the shirts they were selling there. Yeah. And I'm like, I already knew Tony owned that, like that company. Yeah, yeah. I was like, damn. And I need a pedal board, so let me get that. You know. Hell yeah. And that's where I got that from. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking awesome. to upgrade a little bit to where it's a little bit longer, so I could put more on there. Sure. But yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, as I was bringing it up with uh, Lance earlier, you guys are often brought up with the whole death metal revival thing. Yeah. Uh, where do you guys tend to draw from when you're uh, writing? Um, it could be really anything. I mean, well, Slayer, obviously. Slayer. Slayer, yeah. Right. Slayer, uh, dude, I mean, it could be anything. Like, we don't... At least when I'm writing, I don't really look to any specific genre or, or like, band or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it could – my best example of this is I, I really am a big fan of Gary Holt, and he always talks about with his leads. He always pulls it from, like, uh, like blues players, hmm. the, like, blues licks and stuff like that, you know? I can hear that. So, like, I – obviously, like, I've, I have, like, favorite bands or whatever, whatever, but I don't really pull it from any, any band in particular. It's just – I think what's ingrained is, like, I like Slayer – uh, obituary, obviously. The first death metal band I ever heard was Entombed and Obituary. So, just, I don't know. We just try to make what we want to hear, you know? Well, uh, just to kind of wrap this up, why don't you give us what would be your uh, dream tour? Um, Slayer, Morbid Angel, 92, 92 Morbid Angel. Um, Cannibal Corpse, any era. Are you talking about with us on it? Of course. Okay. Uh, Deicide, stab wounds. Sounds killer. Dude, thank you for taking the time. Fuck yeah. We're, uh, I think they're about to sound check here. Fuck yeah. 200 stab wounds, gruesome and obituary. If you can catch it, please do. Fuck yeah. Good time. Thank you all.